Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, creator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today, we've got another video on cathodic protection. Woo! So, uh, we talked a lot, a tremendous amount, when we were in dry dock about the cathodic protection we were putting on the ship, the passive stuff, and I even might have mentioned the impressed current cathodic protection system that we had built into our berth. Uh, that is something that was installed around 2001, 2002 when the museum first opened. And uh, honestly, the institutional memory here wasn't that great. We know we have it because behind me is the rectifier panel that controls half of it. Like we, we knew components of it, but we didn't know what the part that actually went in the water under the ship looked like. And actually, while we were doing some of the work in dry dock going through stuff, we found the blueprints from uh, back in 2002 when the system was originally installed. Uh, and so now we have an idea of what we have down there. And it's a little bit different than what I've described in the past based on what my coworkers have told me. So before we get into the specifics of the system, such as I'm able to recount, uh, first we'll talk about what cathodic protection is as if you haven't already heard enough about that. It, about once a month, we go out and just verify that the system is running correctly. And then uh, every three months, we go out and we use a multimeter to test how much current is in the uh, water and in the ship's hull. Ship, here's where we are right now. These wires, well, one set goes up, you know, from land, brings the power in, but then this goes down and they have wires that go in the riverbed under the ship. The new aluminum anodes came in. More than half of the new aluminum anodes have been installed. Uh, all the ones on the starboard side and they've even started working on the port side now. And we have anodes on the hull. It'll be a brief catch up. So the Ira class battleships have electricity on board. They're sitting in an electrolyte salt water when they're in service, close to fresh water for the battleship right now where she is in the Delaware River. That means that the uh, electricity leaking through the ship is going to start to remove mass from the steel. It's going to cause the paint to pop off. It's going to cause the ship to corrode a lot quicker than if it was just a, a hunk of metal without electricity. And so we have to install sacrificial anodes. The sacrificial anodes are there so that they waste away instead of the steel. In service, in salt water, the Navy would have had zinc anodes on the ship. At the end of their careers, New Jersey was the only Iowa-class battleship that still only had a passive system on board, i.e. 1,204 zinc anodes bolted to the hull. The idea was the zinc would waste away instead of the steel. The other Iowa-class battleships had all had a, an impressed current cathodic protection system installed where they essentially looked at how bad New Jersey had corroded, measured the ship to receive an ICCP system, installed it on the other Iowas, but never got the chance to put one on New Jersey. This impressed current system not just has anodes on the hull, but it's also putting electric charge into the water around the ship that is low enough that it's changing the direction of flow of the uh, electrical current that's trying to go from the ship into the water, taking mass of the steel with it. So you're trying to put that charge back into the ship and it helps keep stuff from corroding. So since New Jersey did not have a built-in system like her sister ships as decommissioned, we built the system in. We did not want to modify our macro artifact, the battleship itself, so our system is built into the berth, the, the pier where the ship is uh, currently tied up. So what you see behind me is the rectifiers for the front half of the ICCP system. And there's another identical one of these at the stern of the ship. These are built into the elevator towers that guests go up to get onto the ship. Essentially, shore power comes into the rectifier, and then from here, it sends a charge out into anodes that are buried under the ship. In the past, uh, we knew that there were four systems of anodes down there, and we've referred to them as sleds, uh, assuming that they were four individual things at different parts of the ship. But since we got the blueprints, we now know that it's more like a 
string of electrical cable with, uh, with cylindrically shaped anodes on them that are about one inch wide and 48 inches long. And there's 16 of them on each of the four cables. The forward tower is roughly one third of the way back from the bow. The aft tower is about one third of the way back from the stern. So each one has a cable that comes out and cuts forward and one that comes out and cuts aft. And so there's complete coverage down the center line of the ship. So the positive current from the rectifier is going down into those cables where the anodes are. The negative current is uh, attached to a wire that's welded to the hull of the ship. So that is more or less completing a circuit and allowing that charge to go through the anodes, through the water, to the ship, and then back again so that the charge is going into the ship and not out of the ship. These systems are usually designed to last for about 20 years. We have our anode expert from Anode Solutions come out and inspect it about uh, once a year. And uh, so we're a little bit 22, 23 years from when this was initially installed. Uh, we are around the end of life for the system, but our expert comes out and tells us it's still in good shape, hasn't completely worn away yet. The, the anodes down there haven't completely deteriorated yet. And this system is undoubtedly a large part of why the ship's hull looks like it's in such good shape as we were able to see while the ship was in dry dock. So we are planning over the next couple of years a future capital project, which will be to replace these. But again, that's going to be one, two, three years down the line, depending on how the capital projects coming up stack up. Of course, dry docking was a major capital project. Redecking the ship was a major capital project. Uh, next up, we're painting the freeboard. That's this year's major capital project. So maybe this will be the following year. Maybe it'll be the year after that. Don't entirely know yet, but at least now we know what we were working with. This isn't the most up-to-date system. It's not what ships that are just getting cathodic protection installed right now, like Salem uh, a couple of years ago got her initial system installed, or Midway got a new system installed because she's been operating for 20 years. Uh, so this is a little bit different than what they use. So it's likely not going to be the same as what we would use uh, when this fails and we replace it with that future capital project. But now that we have this, we know exactly how many anodes, all that stuff, uh, it's gonna really help us plan for that future six-figure capital project. If you're a cathodic protection super fan like I am, or just a fan of the battleship, you can pick up your own Battleship New Jersey zinc anodes. This is one of 1,204 zinc anodes removed from the ship a couple of months ago when the ship was in dry dock. We still have about 800 left that haven't been sold. Uh, and if you would like to buy some, our ship store now is able to ship these out. And so these are available online. And we can not only mail these, we can mail internationally now. So there's a link in the description below if you're interested in owning one of these. All the proceeds from this or anything else you buy on the ship store goes back into the restoration of the battleship. And buying something like this zinc anode or one of the pieces of teak that have been removed from the ship uh, doubly benefits the battleship because it's not a product we had to buy. It came off of the ship, so everything we make off of it goes back into the restoration of the ship. It's not something that half of it goes back to the company that manufactured it. So for you guys who uh, have your own boats, what kind of cathodic protection do you use? What kind of anodes do you have bolted to your ships? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. Remember, you can support us by buying stuff in the ship store or at the donate link in the description below. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.